Switch gears now and talk about something exciting, a pretty big unveiling at the University of Michigan that is really an incredible feat of engineering ingenuity. And now Detroit's Matthew Smith is live on campus. And Matt, we're talking about a Rubik's Cube. This is a <laughs> Rubik's Cube, kind of unlike anything we've ever seen before, huh, Matt? Yeah, a little different, but it actually gets its inspiration from what I'm walking around right now. This is the famed cube near the Student Union. You know, you're taking a look at it right now. This thing is huge, but it doesn't take much to push it. Believe me, I'm not very strong. In fact, not strong at all. But what's so cool about this is that one of the students at University of Michigan came here as a child. She grew up in Ann Arbor, and she drew inspiration from this. So when it came time to graduate, well, she wanted to do something like this. Not the exact same thing, but something that left a mark enjoy all of the passion and joy that this project, this crazy project, brought. To understand the emotion in Samuelina Wright's voice. Sorry, I just wanted to take in this minute. You need to understand what this unveiling means to these young engineers. I wanted this day so badly. Watching people work this one-of-a-kind giant Rubik's Cube is impressive. But for the young engineers involved, it was a day they didn't think would come. Scaling up a Rubik's Cube to this 1,500-pound mammoth display has more challenges than you'd think. I think we bit off a lot to chew, <laughs> and we didn't realize that from day one, you know. It seems crooked. The behind-the-scenes work on this project took years. The original four students that started the project actually graduated. You can rotate each of the individual faces um, like that. New ones eventually joined in, but those original engineers tried to see this through. Wright even hit pause on her career, delaying her start with Boeing to work on this longer. Really at great personal sacrifice, but it was their project. That's the thing, they owned it. So it happens to be here at the University of Michigan and in our College of Engineering, but it's theirs. Which is why, though only a toy, this Rubik's Cube brought real emotions. And I really wanted to have something that I could leave behind, um, something that you know, said, I was here, I did something, and, and, and this project sort of became that for me. <laughs> so one day, the hope is, is just like the cube that you're seeing, all these people that just showed up starting to play with, the hope is, is that the life-size, the big oversized Rubik's Cube itself is once looked at just like this, uh, a relic that you just have to see here on the Ann Arbor campus. And uh, you can see this one still brings a lot of joy, even more than a decade after it's been here. Yeah, uh, Matt, I got a couple questions for you. Three, actually. Uh, first of all, uh, what's the future of this thing? Where can people see that Rubik's Cube? And, and thirdly, has anybody actually solved the puzzle yet? Yeah, exactly. Up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the future, right now, it's going to be in the G.G. Brown building. So it's on the other side of campus. You can actually go in there and anybody can play with it. There's been some talk of possibly building a gazebo up and over it so it can be outside like this one so even more people can see it. Now the question, has anybody solved it yet? Uh, yes, they have, but it takes a lot longer because imagine you see a Rubik's Cube, people start moving around with their hands and you can look at it all different dimensions. Uh -huh. This thing's stuck in one way, so you have to be a little bit more intelligent. You have to move around it. It takes more time. All right, well, that leaves me out of solving it. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm out too. So, good luck, Matt. All right, thanks. Uh, we have new